Hey and welcome back to another 3D how-to video in Blender. So today to move on with our 3D fantasy RPG game, we're going to create an anvil and hammer. And so this will be kind of a station where either a blacksmith would run or you could go up to and either improve or upgrade any of the weapons or tools that you have. So with that said, go ahead and open up Blender and we'll get started. So you may have a general idea of what an anvil looks like, and you could bring up images in Google and use those as references, but there's even an easier way in Blender to bring in images and use those reference images right in your 3D design view so that you can basically model right off of those images. That process is actually surprisingly simple. So with a new project open, you have your default cube here in the middle, go over to the properties panel, and we're gonna drag that out a little bit, and if you go over all the way to the bottom, there's a little spot that allows you to enable background images. So if we expand that and scroll down, we're gonna click that box and add an image. So in today's case, we're gonna actually bring in a picture of an anvil, and we can even bring in multiple pictures depending on what angle we want. So if you're following along, go ahead and download an image of an anvil from the side view and maybe even the top view. So once you do that, go ahead to open and go to the folder that you saved the anvil picture in and we are in Anvil, Pictures, and right now we want the side view. So once you actually add that image, you won't be able to see it yet. That's because that image is only visible in one view. So if you wanted to look at it from the side, maybe you want to enable the right view to hold the image, or the top, or whatever. So to set it to the view that you want, you can actually go down here where it says Axis, click on All Views, and we're going to set it to the right side. So then to view the image, you can go to view, right, and it looks like we can't see it yet, and that's because we're actually in perspective mode. So to be able to view the image, we actually have to get out of right perspective and into right ortho view. And you can do that just by toggling in between view perspective ortho right here. And there we can see the image that we imported. So at this point, it's just a matter of scaling that cube, uh, adding some loop cuts, and then molding those loop cuts to the shape that we want by scaling it, tweaking the, um, the faces, the edges, and the vertices. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just scale the cube up so that it is uh, roughly the size of the anvil. So we can do that if we go into edit mode and with the whole cube selected, we can press S and we're gonna just scale out a little bit and we'll put it right about there. We can fine tune it a little bit more later, okay? So now we're just gonna put in some loop cuts. So over on the left-hand side in the tool shelf, you click loop cut, and once you highlight the object and a purple loop cut shows up, you, without clicking anything, you can scroll the wheel on your mouse to increase how many loop cuts you want. And there's gonna be a little bit of detail in this. We still wanna maintain the low poly look of the rest of our uh, objects in the video game, but let's see. We'll start with um, four extra loop cuts for now. Okay, and so after that, to place them, you can just move them into the center where you want and then click to confirm. So now we have about six edge loops to deal with here. Now when using background images, I usually like to work mostly in the wireframe mode so that you can also see the image while you're working. So to do that, just click Z on the keyboard and you'll see that it'll allow you to see through the object that you're manipulating. So now we wanna loop select these edges that we just created and scale them to size. So to do that, make sure that edge select is selected down at the bottom here, and then hold down Alt on the keyboard while right-clicking the edge loop that you wanna select. And if we turn to the side here, you can see that the whole edge is selected. So let's go right back into uh, right view. You could either do that by going to view down here and clicking right, or you can see that if you hit three on the number pad, it'll take you right back to that right view. So let's go ahead and scale that. We want this to be the top of the base here, so we're just gonna move it out to about right there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So if you hold down Alt and do the loop select, it only selects one of the edges. So to mitigate that, you can just use the border select and select all the edges at once. So to use the border select, click B on the keyboard, highlight the bottom face there with, that contains all the edges, and then you can see that it selects all of those edges that you want. So back in the right view, we can use S to scale, and we're gonna move that out a little bit. We'll give it a little bit of a wider base. There we go. And now let's do the same thing for this small part of the anvil. We're going to click select and we're going to move that in a little bit. And there we go. Let's do that for this part. We'll just need to move that down a little bit because that's kind of a bit of a transition area. Okay, we'll do that. Let's do it to this edge right here. We'll move that down and scale that out to here. Okay. 
and we'll do it up at the top here too. We might need to use border select. So let's hit B on the keyboard, highlight those, hit S to scale, and move that out a little bit. So because we were using the scale tool, we were actually moving these edges symmetrically on each side of the anvil. So over here, we're gonna to need to manipulate it a little bit differently so that it matches the right shape of the back of the anvil here. So to do that, let's just move it a little bit to the side here. Let's select the edge that we want to move, hit three again to go into right view, and we're just gonna move it in. Okay. We can do the same thing to the top of the back of the anvil here. We're gonna move that in. Make sure we're in right view and just move that in a little bit. And we might need to move this one as well. Make sure we're selecting the right one. Let's hit three on the key, hit three on the keyboard to go back into right view and just move that in. Okay, so let's see what that looks like overall. So if we turn to the side and we get out of wireframe mode, we can see that we got the profile right from one side, but we also need to edit it from the top view. So we can go ahead and import a top view of an anvil so that we can get the overall profile from a top-down perspective. So to do that, let's just go ahead and add another image. If we go over to the right in the Properties panel, we can go to Add Image, and down here at the bottom, it'll allow you to add another image. Let's hit Open, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the other picture that I have. So you can just go ahead on Google and search top view of anvil or something like that. Top view. And we are gonna set that to top. So now if we view the anvil from the top, we should be able to see a picture. Let's see, if we go into wireframe mode, we can see that it was covered up a little bit, that's good. So we'll say that the base of the anvil that we created was the right side. So let's go ahead and scale the picture up so that the base of the anvil in the picture matches what we have modeled so far. So let's just go down here to size and we're just gonna scale that up a little bit. We can also move it into place using these X, Y coordinates right here. So let's just kind of experiment a little bit. There we go, that's pretty close to what the picture looks like. And remember, anvils come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So let's go ahead and adjust the top. And we can do that edge by edge instead of just selecting the whole loop. So making sure that edge select is selected, let's click the top edge here and just move that out to the end. We can do the same thing with the front. Let's move that out to the edge and let's bring in the sides so that they match the top face of the anvil. So let's do that same thing with the sides here. We can see that one side is out a little bit more than the other one. And let's see here. If we move that in just a little bit, it should be pretty much on the same, uh, the same size as the top face. So let's go back into top view. And if we go down to view, we can see that top view is numpad seven. So if we click seven on the keyboard, there we go. So we want that to be the same as the top face. There we go. Let's do that same thing with this side. Bring it over, there we go. Let's take another look here. Okay, we wanna move this side in as well. So let's click on that side, hit seven on the keyboard. Move that in. How does that look? Okay, we're getting there, that looks a little bit better. Let's see if we can do a border select to all the top edges, so basically the upper, the upper half of the anvil, and just scooch it over so that it kind of sits in the middle. So if we click B on the keyboard, we can highlight all of this uh, in the top half of the anvil, and let's just kind of slide it over this way. Let's see, if we can get a side view here. That looks pretty good, there we go. Let's go back in the top view. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So now that we have the 3D outline of the anvil, we can now go ahead and start adding detail to its different features. So let's start with the horn here. So let's go ahead and add some loop cuts to the anvil, and it's going to want to place it right in the middle, that's okay. We're just going to move it all the way to the right side here. Now let's go ahead and do that a couple more times so we have more edges to work with. Okay, so let's go ahead and manipulate those edges a little bit to make the actual, like, kind of cone-ish horn shape of the anvil. So let's select the front edge right here, hit S on the keyboard and just scale that down a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. You might have to zoom in a little bit to be able to get a good uh, range of motion when scaling certain things in Blender. Let's move it down a little bit. There we go. Let's do the same thing to this top edge here. We can scale that in a little bit. 
Same with this one, scale that in. Okay, so the next really quick thing that we wanna do is create these uh, U-shaped indents on the base of the anvil. And that's also really simple. That's just adding some loop cuts and manipulating them into that shape. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead to loop cut. And it looks like we already have a lot on the left side, so we can just add some on the right side as well. Let's bring that in. And let's just kind of match the left side with the right side. And we'll add one more right here. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and start selecting these edges on the bottom and moving them in. So we want to select these two to start, and you can select two at once just by holding shift on the keyboard. And let's go ahead and move that in. And we'll move that about around 0.5. You could either type it in or just note the distance that you're moving it at the bottom. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Select these two, and we're going to move those as well. So let's see how that looks so far. I think that's actually coming along pretty well. I think we can move on to putting in the holes at the top. So there are a lot of ways of making holes in Blender, and the easiest one that I found is using a Boolean modifier. That basically just consists of adding an object that's the basic size and shape of your hole, and using that to create a cut into another model. So we're gonna do that really quickly with the hardy hole, which is the square hole in the top of the anvil. So let's go ahead into object mode, and we're gonna add a cube, okay? So let's go ahead and put that in the general position that we want. And let's go ahead right into edit mode. So let's scale this down first of all to the correct uh, outside perimeter of the hole that we want. Let's see, move that into, into place. We can go into top view. Okay, maybe make it a little bit smaller. That looks pretty good. Let's move it down closer to the uh, where the hole is gonna be. And now let's basically just extrude one face all the way through the anvil where the hole is gonna be. So let's click on the bottom face, making sure that face select is selected down at the bottom here. Click E, and we're just gonna move that all the way down through the anvil. So you can see that our object is moving completely through our anvil object. Okay, so we're finished editing that object. So go into object mode, and we're going to label this hardy hole, which is a hilarious name. I didn't make it up. That's a, a traditional blacksmithing anvil uh, descriptive name. Um, again, I have no idea why it's like that. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and rename this anvil. And now what we're going to do is add a modifier to the anvil. You can add a modifier by going to the little wrench icon right here. Go to add modifier, and the modifier that we're going to be adding is called boolean. So that will be right here. So now we want to select the object that's going to be creating the hole, and we can do that right here where it says object. Click on this box right here, and it already gives a list of the different objects within the design tree or within the model itself. And we're going to click hardy hole. So it's going to give us a couple of options here to the different operation or the different type of cut that we're going to do. So right now it's set to intersect, which means everything that isn't within the, the hardy hole cube that we created is going to be deleted. That's not what we want. So let's go ahead and go to difference. And so what that's going to do is go ahead and delete everything that the cube is intersecting or, or that it would be inside the hardy hole cube that we created. So with that done, hit apply. And now we can just go ahead and delete the hardy hole cube. And there you can see a hole is left. Let's go ahead and do that exact same thing, but with the Pritchell hole, which is the small round hole in the anvil, which is used to make nails and other things like that. So to do that, we can just add a cylinder. Let's go to add mesh cylinder. Okay, let's, uh, let's just keep it that many vertices because we want it to be a round hole. We don't want some kind of like octagon or anything like that. So let's go ahead and put it generally in the right place. We can go ahead and edit mode, hit S on the keyboard with the whole thing selected to make the, the overall radius smaller. Let's put that back into place. Do that by going in the top view. We're just gonna move it right about there. OK. 
Okay, maybe we can go ahead and make it even smaller. There we go, that looks pretty good. And let's just extrude the bottom face all the way through the anvil. Making sure face select is selected. So select the bottom face there. Hit E on the keyboard for extrude and just extrude it all the way through the anvil. Okay. So we can go ahead and call that Pritchell hole. P-R-I-T-C-H-E-L, I think it's called. Hole. Okay. Let's go ahead into object mode. Now with the anvil selected, we can go ahead and add another modifier. Go to Boolean. The object that we want is the Pritchell hole and we want it to uh, use the difference. Okay, hit apply. And then we can just go ahead and delete the Pritchell hole uh, cylinder that we made. There we go. Now with that done, let's just go ahead and add some color to the anvil. We can do that just by going over to the material editor and right here in the white bar under diffuse. And we're just gonna make it a very dark gray color because that's what most anvils look like. So if you had a tool or weapon in the game and you wanted to go ahead and repair it, you wouldn't be able to do it with an anvil alone. You need something to actually strike your weapon with. So for your character to be able to do that, let's go ahead and model a hammer. And that's going to be really quick and simple, and you're going to use all of the same tools and properties that you use to make this anvil. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. If you wanna go ahead and add more detail, if this is a little bit too low poly for you, go ahead and add some more loop cuts and manipulate them the way that you want. The ability to add a reference image into Blender is a really big deal. You could always look at a reference image on another screen or on your phone or something like that, but this allows you to manipulate the edges and the vertices and the faces into the exact position that you want. It's almost a way to trace an object in Blender. So definitely try this one out, and as always, make it completely your own. And don't forget to make sure that you tweet me a picture of your final model. If you have any questions about this video or you have a request for a video in the future, make sure you leave it down in the comments below. Also, if you got value from this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.